Hello everyone and welcome to the Kaijusaurus podcast. Now, dear listeners, you may realise that I, Ross, am completely on my own. Stephen went to G-Fest in Chicago, Illinois last month and, well, he did not return and I've been quite alone. So what I've done is I've uh, reconstructed Stephen as Mecha Stephen. So I have Mecha Stephen here with me today for the podcast. Hello, Ross. It is lovely to be here. It's good to have you, Mecha Stephen. How was G-Fest? G-Fest? Stephen, I don't like that G-Fest. look you're giving me. G-Fest? You're, you're coming towards G-Fest. me in a way that I don't like. Ah! Right, now that that's out of the way, uh, I'm feeling a bit better. I'm feeling much better now, Ross. Thank I'm you. Good, I'm glad. Um, this is the Kaijusaurus podcast, the podcast in which myself, uh, my Stephen Sloss, watches and reviews all 30 films, 31 films, excuse me, in the Godzilla canon with uh, my good friend, Ross. Hello there, and uh, just to avoid confusion, this is Flesh Stephen. <laughs> uh, Flesh Sloss. Bio Stephen. Bio Stephen. Bio Stephen. <laughs> Uh, and Bio Ross, we're here <laughs> as two organic beings to talk about Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Uh-huh. And as Ross uh, mentioned in the uh, prelude, uh-huh. the uh, uh, pre-credit scene, uh, I got back from G Fest a few weeks ago. You got the last uh, train out of Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> where I hung out with uh, a lot of cool people, and I, I met a lot of cool people. I met. Who did you Ta- meet? I met Akira Takarada. Mr. Takarada himself. Who was my the number one person in the whole world that I wanted to meet and I have and I don't think it's like quite properly sunk in Oh no, yet. I bet not. But um, What was he like? Oh, well, first of all, he is strikingly handsome. Even at 82. He's uh-huh. just like, my word, you're a fine specimen. And he's extremely polite, very gentle, very patient. And uh, he's, he's just everything you hoped he would be. A total gent is how I would describe Good. him. And yeah. if I'm right, And a big you... flirt. Oh, bless. <laughs> he did, did he have a wee flirt with you? I, mean, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, you were saying that you, you actually flyered him, you solicited him? I gave Akira Takarada a flyer for the podcast you're currently listening to. I interrupted his lunch to do so, and I was immediately filled with deep regrets. I was immediately filled with a deep sense of self-loathing. That's okay. <laughs> the thing I had done. It's good. He's definitely listening. I <laughs> guaranteed Akira Takarada himself is absolutely listening to the podcast. Takarada-san, this episode goes out to you. And on that note, we are here to discuss 1974's Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Uh, this is... 19, I just said 1974, didn't I? Yeah. This is the last entry in the series directed by... John Fukuda. My boy John. Who previously gave us Eber Horror of the Deep, Son of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Gigan, and Godzilla vs. Megalon. He had a good run. Or did he? I, I, I think he had a good run. I think he had a good yeah, run. I, I, yeah, no, definitely. And I've I, always liked his direction. I think he has a very underrated run. And I, I regard him as sort of the unsung hero of the Godzilla series in that he cemented the idea of the hero Godzilla which is in so many people's consciousness as Godzilla's character, the hero Godzilla. Like, the hero Godzilla arrived before John Fukuda's films, but to me, he really cemented the hero Godzilla, like mm. in films like Gigan and Megalon, yeah. that sort of thing, where he is out and out a superhero. Totally. So that's that's my opinion on Mr. Fukuda. I've, I mean, I've always said that I found Jun Fukuda to be great at making just solid entries mm. just always well directed always worth watching so i've always enjoyed his movies so when i found out that this was another uh, jim fukuda i was very pleased when i found out this was the last jim fukuda i was a bit upset <laughs> um, but no so so this film ross uh-huh um so godzilla versus megalon was kind of a big disappointment across Across the board. Yeah, cool. Didn't really go down too well. I mean, it, it didn't work. Yeah, it was what it was. Yeah. So the franchise was in desperate need of a kickstart. Like a real kick up the arse or or it's or it's, or it's stopping. Mm-hmm. So Tomoyuki Tanaka, the stalwart uh, producer of the series, uh-huh. 
approaches longtime writer Shinichi Sekazawa saying, you know, we really need something. Come on, man, we, we the, need something. It's the 20th anniversary film, we really need something. Shinichi Sekazawa says, there's nothing more I can write, there's no more monsters, there's <laughs> nothing more to be done. Uh, special effects director and protege of Iji Tsuburaya, Teruyoshi Nakano, suggests a mechanical monster because it might be cheaper. I don't really know what the reasoning behind that statement was, yeah. but that's what he suggested. It might be cheaper to do a mechanical monster. Don't know why. Like. <laughs> and Shinichi Sekizawa says, by Jove, I think he's got it. Mm -hmm. And so Sekizawa pens the story outline for the film. Right. Doesn't pen the film. Pens the story outline for what would become Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, and that was the last thing he wrote. And uh, the final screenplay goes to John Fukuda and a uh, co-writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Toho are banking on this film to really... It's sort of a last-ditch effort. Yeah, bring it back. Bigger budget. Uh-huh. Bigger ensemble of characters. True. Uh, returning faces returning exactly returning faces which have been absent in the last few series but we haven't had really had any familiar faces since Godzilla's Revenge and even then it was sort of in minor roles cameos etc but to to scale it back just a little bit uh, before we watched Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla earlier uh, Ross and I did a wee bit of additional viewing um, and as I explained to you earlier, Ross, between Godzilla vs. Megalon and Godzilla vs. Hedra in late 1973, Toho get to work on a live-action, giant superhero TV series of their own to combat Subarara Productions, Ultraman, Fireman, etc. Toho debuts Zone Fighter, or Ryusei Ninjin Zone, Zone the Meteor Man, Zone Fighter. Mr. Zone. <laughs> M Zone. M Zone. Um, Zone Fighter. Uh, sort of a, a riff on the Ultraman thing. You know, giant superhero. He has. Uh, you can only stay transformed for so long, etc. But it's a lot of fun. And Toho has the advantage that they can use their pre-established stable of monsters. Toho expanded universe. Exactly. Well, like I said to you earlier, Toho are on record saying that you know Zone Fighter, the twenty-six episode series is canon to the first run of Godzilla films, the Showa Godzilla series. Ah, so, there you, go. you know, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, so, the, this this show about the giant superhero Zone Fighter features guest appearances from Godzilla in about five or six episodes, I think. Uh, King Ghidorah appears in a two-parter episode, which is actually really good. It's really good. And uh, Gigan, who we last left flying off into the distance in Godzilla vs. Megalon, returns again under alien control and in Zone Fighter he meets Godzilla for the third time and finally kicks the bucket. R.I.P. And, uh, <laughs> and Zone Fighter featured episodes directed by Shiro Honda and Jun Fukuda. Yeah, so it's a big... And had special effects by Teruyoshi Nakano and someone by the name of Koichi Kawakita who would go on to be the chief special effects director of the 1990s. Right, okay. So it's, 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 it's lovely there's... There's a very sort of organic process in the shifting of the staff of the Godzilla series. And it's there's a bit really of a nice. playground there as well. E yeah, well, exactly, yeah. And there's, yeah, you, from the brief clips you saw, the monsters in Zone Fighter are just kind of... Uh... They're out there. Yeah, they're, they're out there. One of them looks like it's got like a sponge on its back. <laughs> um... So, yeah, that's what, um, that's what Toho have been up to in between the two films. So this is a pretty packed time for them. Yeah, they're trying their best. Yeah, so... Godzilla versus, versus Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla. Um, shall we dive into it? As yeah, we let's say. dive in. Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Um, I did enjoy it. Surprise! Uh, I always like a Jun Fukuda film. Really good score from Masaru Sato, Sato, yeah, who is my favourite composer. He previously composed Godzilla Raids again. Yeah. Ebra Horror of the Deep, Son of Godzilla. Um, strong opening. I feel like this film, like always, all these different genres are always going into Godzilla movies. This one it was very much the mature thriller. At times it felt like a little bit like, what's it bloody called? The Da Vinci Code. <laughs> it was much more of a like big ensemble, <laughs> two professors, two whole professors, yeah. <laughs> um, archaeologists... A little bit of race against time. Interpol agents. Interpol agents. The statue's almost a MacGuffin. Yeah. Running around there. I mean, I mean, throughout the film, our characters are stalked by not one, 
not two, but three random mysterious people. You know, the yeah. two Interpol agents and yeah. the the alien, the alien henchman, the yeah. alien yeah henchman in disguise. So I did actually really enjoy the the plot of this movie. Human characters again, not particularly engaging. No real emotional yeah. thread yeah, through yeah. them. Yeah, there's no great arc for the human. Yeah, characters, no yeah. great arc again. Just great costumes. Yeah. Um, the returning professor played by... Akihiko Hirata Serizawa of the original film. Looking trendy as shit. Yeah. Slim, beautiful costume. Yeah, yeah. The mysterious stranger with his sunglasses, black coat. All these sort of things. Yeah. Solidly good political... Mm. No, not political, but sort of historical adventure thriller almost. Yeah, yeah. There's chases. They go all over Japan. Um, the fighting... Interesting, cool. Mecha Godzilla was actually a great concept, and a good Godzilla. Yeah. Generally, the character Godzilla in this one, solid motivation, a real like yeah. desire for vengeance against this and he's part, he's, Godzilla. He, in, in, in this, he's part of a greater scheme. Oh. He's, he's fulfilling a prophecy, exactly, which is fun. But speaking about Mecha Godzilla, what I really like about this incarnation of Mecha Godzilla, because mm -hmm. there are more to come. Right. Okay. Um, is that this thing looks like a solid piece of kit. It does. This thing looks like a heavy fucking machine. Well engineered. It, yeah, it, it, and that's what it looks like. It looks like a big, heavy machine. It's covered in nuts and bolts, and it just, it doesn't, it, I mean, it is blazingly bright and silver, but it doesn't look like, like I don't know, like the bridge of the Enterprise in the rebooted Star Trek no, universe. No, it doesn't, it doesn't look, look flimsy. It, doesn't it look, looks... Yeah, it doesn't look glossy as shit. It looks like a machine built for war. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Like heavy, yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. That that's the main word I use to describe it. It's heavy. It's, it looks like a heavy fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, okay, the plot. Plot. <laughs> yeah, we'll run through. Uh, we open with Angiris. You mean Ang Angiris or <laughs> Angarasa? Ang Angara. Roaring on top of some mountains, which is apparently meant to be in uh, Siberia. I see. Yeah. Didn't get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not stated explicitly in the text, but apparently that's where it's meant right, to okay, be. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he's sensing something's wrong. Something's wrong, and Gira shouldn't attack his friend Godzilla. That's a, that's that's a, a line that's in the dub of the oh. film. Oh. Um, so basically, fast forward. Um, so there's a couple of brothers. One is... Gosh, what? Brothers. <laughs> One's like a scientist, the other's like yeah. a photographer. I that's right, called yeah. them in my notes Brother One and Brother Two. Brother <laughs> One being the older one, Brother Two being the younger one. Yeah, Brother Two was the star of Zone Fighter. Yes, well that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I can't recognise them then based yeah. on that. Um, so, one of our brothers is exploring a cave. That's right. And finds a piece of mysterious metal. That's right. Our other brother uh, explores another cave. <laughs> <laughs> and finds in... Recently discovered ruins, an old statue, an old yeah. prophecy mm. written on the wall. This is an Okinawan, like sort of old yeah. historical legend. And he also meets on that site uh, a young a young archaeologist. A young archaeologist. And, uh, she's there to, to well to 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 assist to, him essentially. Yeah, to, yeah. Um, now the race of people or the the, the civilization that wrote yeah. this prophecy is, is the Azumi. Yeah, the Azumi royal family. The yeah. Azumi royal family. And early on in the film, we meet a young uh, dancer, performer, yeah. who claims to be the descend descended yeah. from the Azumi sort of royal dynasty, and who at the very beginning of the film has oblique, Vision, destructive yeah. visions, yeah. monsters attacking. And a, monster, then, a monster will set fire to the city and trample on the people who try to run away. She well, has a vision of King Ghidorah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That didn't happen. Yeah. I think that's it. That's that's fun, though. Like it's yeah, just, no, it's just she sort of sees everything. Yeah. You know, she sees all of this Godzilla stuff that's happened. Yeah. Like, all yeah. these big monster things just rush yeah. through her. Yeah, she lived through the events of Godzilla vs. Guy. Exactly. She yeah, knows King Ghidorah. There. So the, leg the, the prophecy is simply when a black mountain appears above the clouds, a huge monster will come forth to destroy the world. But when the sun rises... In the east, east or west? Oh, yeah, in a certain direction. In the east slash west, two monsters will appear to save the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the odds are going to stack. There, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, sort of, <laughs> it sort of answers its own question. Um, so this doomsday monster does indeed appear. appear, and it appears to be none other than Godzilla himself. himself. And a lot of people are expressing surprise in this. I never thought the prophecy would have referred to Godzilla. Mm -hmm. But um, this Godzilla's cold fucker, isn't there's, he? He is. <laughs> he's a he's a cold 
motherfucker. He rips Angur Angurus Angurus's jaw. Like, yeah, he, he off. snaps it in King Kong style. Yeah, yeah. And blood splurts out of it. But there's something a wee bit off there about is. this Godzilla. This what was not... the first thing you noticed that was a bit off about this Godzilla? He it is just this, almost the confidence. It is like yeah. a very like suddenly very confident Godzilla that knows exactly what he's doing. Very violent compared to the usual Godzilla style, which is more like wrestling style. Yeah, yeah, grappling. scrapping, yeah, scrapping. This Godzilla, first of all, takes the fighting stance, yeah, and then immediately it's throwing punches. The fight progresses, and he causes Angurus to bleed, mm. and then starts ripping off his jaw. Yeah, and it's absolutely brutal. It really is a lot of blood in this movie. Oh yeah, there is a lot of blood. But the first giveaway about this this. Uh, Godzilla doppelganger is uh-huh. the roar. Right. The roar is a kind of tinny, mechanically... Oh, I didn't notice that. Did you know? No, I did not. <laughs> I, um, when I, I just was... thought I was super clever for being like, hmm, this is strange, he's acting differently. <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice that. Fair enough. Well, the, well the, when I first saw this as a kid, that was the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh, wait, no, the roar's different. I was just... You were raging. I was a little dweeby if kid you, going, if you why had, did they change his roar? If the internet was around there, well, it was, <laughs> but if you had more access to it, you would have written a just very angry letter before you finished A very the film. angry thread on the you Toho Kingdom You would have jumped to a conclusion <laughs> and acted on that. So yeah, eventually this, this Godzilla, after defeating Anguirus and Sinem, scuttling back underground, makes its way to an oil refinery and just causes mass destruction with a yellow heat ray. Mm-hmm. And uh, our human heroes are observing this, saying, you know, something's really wrong here. Something's odd about Godzilla. He wouldn't do this. Until the Except real... for all the times that he's <laughs> done exactly that <laughs> and worse. Until the real <laughs> Godzilla uh, bursts out of a warehouse. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's been chilling. Yeah, and... Uh, and then they fight. Yeah, uh, th- and this 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 doppelganger sheds its flesh skin. Yeah, to... and reveals itself as Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla under the control of uh, the aliens from the third planet of the black hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to say I-, I couldn't actually remember what their specific alien race name was. A bunch of ape men. They are ape men. Yeah. They are indeed. Well, to contextualise that, by this point, 1974, I think there had been four Planet of the Apes movies. Right, and all were big hits in Japan. Um, so <laughs> Space Apes is the, I mean, yeah. it's the next step Super, no, Super Iron Productions made their own Space Apes thing as well it, Super Iron Productions company that makes Ultraman yeah um, called uh, it was a TV series called uh, Ape Core uh-huh. uh huh but it was truncated into a TV movie called Time of the Apes so uh Ape, Japan's gone ape yeah, crazy no, we have gone ape crazy no the apes are they've good, gone bananas they have gone bananas not as exciting aliens as I've often had a big love for the aliens in the costumes. I thought these were sort of just fine. The thing is, decent villains. The fact that they regress to apes once injured is almost too much. Like yeah, it's, like there's, there's 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 no reason for them to be apes. Yeah, they, whereas like, like most in, of our other alien races have just been human. Yeah. Actors like, well, like in, in two films ago, like they, they turn out to be cockroaches, which That's is right, like really yeah. fun. But, but like, yeah, the ape thing—it doesn't add too much. I understand that it's there to sort of like appeal to that. The ape thing almost feels like a retroactive decision in a way, or uh-huh. or a very late addition. Like it, it almost feels like it was shoehorned in a little bit because it, it's not. It's not that prevalent. And they don't really talk about it. It's not really. Yeah. It's not like oh, they were here on Earth before. You know, they aren't just, they're not like our apes. There's no, they, for we don't know if they're from, they are from another planet, but yeah, yeah. there's no connection to our own apes. They yeah, just yeah, happen okay. to also look yeah. like apes, so it's a strange thing like that. But Planet of the Apes was popular. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So decent, fine aliens. The one thing that I did enjoy about the lead alien was that he, despite trying to destroy the Earth and be this weird alien from a far off, Loved his cigars. And he loved his <laughs> alcohol, brandy, yeah. his brandy, yeah. which I just thought was a funny touch to yeah. see this clearly alien who doesn't get out much on earth, just sitting <laughs> puffing away at cigars, sitting drinking a lovely brandy, a nice little stopper yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was quite funny. I thought that was a, a decent little comic touch that made me laugh a lot. Um, so our human characters, essentially in the middle point of the film, and this is where it does become a bit thrillery yeah we spend a lot more time in between the first fight with mecha godzilla and the second fight yeah. where essentially both the com- the opponents are re- recharging yeah yeah exactly um 
they're trying to find out what's going on. They're trying mm. to research the old stories about this um, statue. Mm. Meanwhile, you know, Akihiko Hirata's scientist is kidnapped and forced to repair Mechagodzilla mm-hmm. because he's an Earth scientist who knows space technology. Yes. And uh, his his daughter and the and brother too are held at ransom. And, and if, if he doesn't agree to fix Mechagodzilla... They'll get... He, they'll get um, what was it? Get, it was... Scalded, scalded, scalded to, to death. death. So you know, Aki Ikora finishes repairing Mechagodzilla on behalf of the yeah. aliens. Does the dirty work? Does it, I mean? But he's deeply regretful. He does. It, yeah. He does regret. And he it. says, you know, I, I've held up my end of the bargain. You release them now, and he goes, oh, of course, Professor. And I mean, what we expect, and he chucks them into the, the cell with them, mm. and they get scalded for what seems like hours. Yeah, like it's, it's oh, it's a good while. Our other brother mm. and his sort of a. Uh, Lady friend, mm, archaeologist. Yeah. There's something going on there. Maybe. They... On a beautiful night like this, you should talk about love. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. They discover that if you put the statue that they've found in that cave back in its rightful place in Okinawa, mm. it may revive the old Azumi sort of god-guardian monster. Yeah. The second monster of the prophecy. Yes. King, King Caesar. Caesar. So they go off to do that, and they are finally... They will, first of all, they are attacked by a, Godzilla, um, a gorilla <laughs> monster alien that's trying yeah, yeah. to steal the statue, but they are rescued by the mysterious stranger, the man yeah. in black, the black sunglasses. You're casting! <laughs> Your character! Agent Nanbara. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's the standout character in this movie. Yeah. Because he spends the entire first half of the film skulking around, being a, made a, made a major creep. Laughing to himself. Uh, yeah, following them around, saying, you know, I'm a freelance reporter. If I get this, it could be a big scoop. I can make a lot of money, so I hope you'll help me. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we have no reason to help you. <laughs> but it turns out it's all a big ruse, mm-hmm. and he's an Interpol agent, and he just becomes a total badass yeah. after that, and he's great, and he's awesome. But yeah, a great character design. Again, yeah. put them in an interesting costume. Big coat. Well, it's fun. Black. That that actor, Shin Kishida, who plays uh, Nanbara, mm-hmm. uh, sort of achieved fame in the early 70s with Toho because he he's sort of unofficially known as the Japanese Dracula because right. he starred in two uh, vampire films for Toho as a very Dracula-esque figure. Mm-hmm. And in one of them, he actually plays a descendant of Dracula. Right. And he's, he makes a great... As you can probably tell, he makes a great vampire. Oh, yeah. And uh, in, in this, he even has like a kind of big... a huge cowl-esque collar on his long coat. And That's cool. Yeah, like, he wears sunglasses in the dark. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's cooler than being cool? Exactly. Being Agent Nambara. Mm-hmm. So, reuniting with them... They first of all go to they rescue everyone first and then deal with. They King rescue Caesar. everyone from the alien base. Uh, some of them rush back in and say, "We're going to take them down." Yeah, yeah. we're going to blow up the HQ. And to some blow of the up. others. So Nanbara, brother two, and Akiko a scientist, run back to the alien base to to blow up. Whereas all the others remain behind to wake up King Caesar, mm-hmm. which they do after a lengthy. Song. Oh yes, the song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so our, our dancer I mean, girl. It's, it's 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 no Mothra song. It's no it is no Mothra song. It goes for like three verses. <laughs> it's quite a wee while. It's, she, it's funny because it has a point where it's like it's it clearly should have ended. And it doesn't. It reaches a natural point of conclusion and then keeps going. It does not. She just kneels there in the sand, yeah. singing her wee song. And what I say to you during it, it's funny to imagine that like to to King Caesar, this sounds like what like an alarm sounds like to us. Like oh, the, that's it. Yeah. No, I mean, he is just, like, having to wake up. He's been forced awake by this annoying yeah. singing. Um, so <laughs> King Caesar's a strange one. He's like a little weird gremlin-looking <laughs> fucker. A weird little gremlin-looking father. <laughs> father? Fucker. Fucker. Well, he's actually... he's He is based on uh, Japanese myth. Right. His appearance is like that. That that's that statue of King Caesar is a real right. Thing. Okay, that's yeah. cool. That's very cool. Um, so yeah, King Caesar is actually based on uh, the Chisi guardian lion of Chinese myth and legend. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, which is it's an Okinawan variation on that legend, yeah. but it is a real life thing. So King Caesar does have some real life. Uh, Basis. Yeah, that's actually very cool. Uh, so yeah, he's sort of a, a, a dog, kind of dog dragonish. Yeah, uh, gremlin. 
Like, <laughs> he's just a big hairy fucker, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. Rabbit ears, snub like, nose. His 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 ears shoot straight up when he's when he's startled and. And again, he is, he's not as a lot of the. He's not impressive. He's he's not hugely, <laughs> but I appreciate the design because so many of the kaiju's are reptilian, mm. scaly, spiky sort of. But he's very like mammalian. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, oh, yeah. He's definitely a mammal. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like much more. He's thinner as well, yeah. right? He, he, he's like he's, a bit scrappier. Yeah, he's very agile, which is kind of refreshing. And it's Don't, funny because you know, obviously, a lot of the film was built up on you know King Caesar's going to awaken and uh, drive off the the, uh, the the doomsday monster. And uh, I mean, he puts up an okay fight for the first few minutes, but then just he didn't Mecha help Godzilla, that much. No, he didn't. No, Mechagodzilla just lays into him. And like I, he manages to reflect Mechagodzilla's eye beams a few times. Yeah, he's and, like provides a bit of a distraction. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he hold, he holds him off till Godzilla can arrive. Exactly, that's it. So King Caesar gets his ass kicked after a whole film of build up, and uh, when it all looks when it looks like all is lost, when Godzilla's bleeding from the neck. <laughs> well, almost, well, Godzilla comes back at this point. Oh, that's true. You're getting ahead of yourself there, Ross. Godzilla returns at this point. And he's like, right. Round two. Let's go. And uh, so it's uh, King Caesar and Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, hero monsters triumph and peace is restored to Okinawa. Kaboom. Kaboom. Goes Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Gets and... his neck snapped like General Zod. And there's sort of peace in our land again. And we sort of close on a shot of the statue of uh, King, uh, King Caesar. King yeah. Caesar, yeah. Sort of looking over us, guarding us, yeah. guarding Okinawa. And we end. Yeah, we do. So that's Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. A fine film. The end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, a, another decent entry. Yeah, nothing I've... hugely special. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, maybe this is going to be our first big points of disagreement. All right. Because this is my favorite of John Fukuda's films. Right. Okay. And it's my second favorite of the seventies uh-huh. after Hedra. Um, I think. Watching this film in the context of, you know, just coming off the back of Megalon, the improvement across all fields is staggering. I mean, you're not wrong. It's it's like night and day. Obviously, you know, Toho gave this a significantly increased budget. That comes across in, like, like there's a larger cast, like we said earlier, a larger cast, familiar faces, new monster costumes. Uh, I mean, see that, that oil refinery miniature set? That's... It is amazing. Good. Yeah, no, and great like, effects. The way, I mean, Chiryushi Nakano, the special effects director, is kind of uh, famous slash infamous for his explosion work. He, he almost like, set fire to Toho on numerous occasions. Um, Lad. Like the explosions. Lad. In, <laughs> the explosions in the oil refinery scene are just incredible. Yeah, they really like, are. He's kind of like crazy Harry from the Muppet Show. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> Kaboom, blow yeah. up. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, it definitely is like vastly improved just mm. across the board and I think all that is true I still think it's a bit more interesting than some of the other like more like placeholder Godzilla films mm. that I've maybe seen um, so I do firmly enjoy it I do like Jun Fukuda's it's certainly not my favourite of the Jun yeah, Fukuda's yeah, yeah. I still think that's Ebra Horror of the Deep yeah or, that's, yeah, that's my second favourite of his um, but I will always say Jun Fukuda can bloody direct a scene yeah, oh god. There's just much what? more an improvement. What about. Oh, sorry, no, you continue, sorry. Okay, well, I'll just say there's just much more an improvement throughout, just in terms of just basic, simple direction in building atmosphere. The opening scene of Angura crawling through. <laughs> Angurus. Angurus crawling through the island in the mist. Really arresting. Yeah. Always arresting title credits, always good music choice with mm. um, Jim Fukuda as well. And Masato Sato, yeah, they work well yeah, together. They do yeah. work They complement well each other very they well. They really do. Well, Talking about Jim Fukuda's direction, what struck me this time, and again, fuck knows how many times I've seen this film, but what struck me this time is that it, there's a lot of like really interesting and well done handheld camera work. Yeah, like when um when the heroes are attacked in uh, the, the professor played house. by Hiroshi Koizumi's house, Uncle Professor, Uncle Professor, there we go, yeah, Uncle Professor's house, and uh, our hero runs out to chase the assailant, and uh, it, it, it's all shot handheld as he just stands in the middle of the street and is looking around for the assailant. I thought that and, was yeah, such a great that's shot. Such yeah. a great scene because it puts us right in his shoes. Like there's a sort of sense of fever and uh, urgency. Where did he go? Yeah, Where did he go? that was really cool. Dog yeah. barking in the distance, train yeah. uh, sounding off. Yeah, 
from no far. score, yeah. And there's 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 more handheld camera work in the uh, in, in the in the boat fight or the boat chase. Yeah. Uh, the chase on the boat. It's not a boat chase between two boats. Uh, the, the yeah, the fight between the hero and the one of the, uh, the, the ape but yeah, henchmen no, on the boat. I think Jim Fukuda is just a bit more comfortable holding shots longer. Yeah. Having a bit more of a, a, a steadier sequence, longer shots. Yeah. And he can just do a good sequence. Like the boat chase is very thrilling, very good. Yeah. But one of my favourite shots of that movie is when we cut to some sort of coast, stormy, stormy night. Oh, and yeah. And Godzilla has survived. He's come back out of the water and he's getting ready to go out there again. Mm. And he's almost hyping himself up. He's getting hit by lightning, which comes yeah. back later on. He does harness the power of the lightning <laughs> to recharge later on in the film. But he's just standing there in the rain, sort of pumping himself up, getting hit by lightning. Thought that was an absolutely great, atmospheric, like, exciting shot. Yeah. And I think Jim Fukuda is very, very good at that. So he does take these films. He's the best one to give these sort of plots to. Um, oh god yeah 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 totally. to give a particular type of story especially the ones that don't have as strong mm. personal human stories i think he always gets the best out of those yeah and makes it so that we don't require yeah a personal human story that's not needed for this film yeah no totally but having said that i mean compare the intricacies of this i mean you, you certainly could argue there's maybe a bit too much going on in this plot and the characters do too often split into two teams and do other stuff where there's in one team there is a brother and an interpol agent and a professor That's and in the other agent. team there is an interpol a brother and a professor and, and a girl and, yeah and a, and a girl yeah um but i mean compare the intricacies of this plot and how interwoven it all is with just the previous film megalon where the, yeah. the plot is like way for well, thin it's all over the place it's wafer thin yeah i mean this is tight yeah it is well put together it's yeah. firmly well constructed i mean it, it does come down to at the end the human protagonists are Actually, no, you know what? I'm actually talking bullshit there because the human protagonists are not, as I was about to say, reduced to just standing watching the monsters cheering them on. They do a lot. The human protagonists do actually have stuff to do during the monster finale. Uh, then Bara, Brother 2, and Akihiko Hirata are captured by the, uh, the spacemen, but um, they're formulating a plan to help defeat Mechagodzilla. The, uh, is it worth going into the professor's pipe? There's a lot to talk about in this There's, film. Basically, the professor just takes out his pipe oh, and explains it's something. It's a powerful pipe. Yeah, it's a science pipe. The it's, way a, yeah. he's... it's a science pipe. Think about something that's like... It's not quite like the Lady Guard alarm from Invasion of Astro Monster. It's not quite like the electrodes from Godzilla vs. Hedra. And it's not quite like the Oxen Destroyer. And it, it's all of those, but shit. And you can also smoke using it. Something, something magnets. Yeah. Um, and it's made of space space titanium. Yes, made of space yeah. titanium. No, he was really excited about his cool pipe. Yeah. He, it literally, to quote, it's a powerful it's pipe. A power. <laughs> and it's made out of... <laughs> yeah. But, um, there's a really... On the, as some of you listening to this one know, there's a really funny subtitle error on the Sony TriStar Blue, uh, DVD of this. And Akiko Rata is explaining his science pipe and just says, ah, oh, it's made out of... <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> oh, we'll never know. We'll never no know, idea. exactly. I mean, space aluminium. Mm -hmm. Space carbonite. Space zinc. Space, <laughs> space copper. Space gold. Um, <laughs> I wonder if he, used, he bought it using space yen. <laughs> space bitcoin. Anyway. <laughs> Very violent Godzilla film. Oh, Blood. Yeah, we are, death. We are way out of E.G. Sabaraya territory now. Yeah. Because he was famously against bloodshed. It's true. Um... Given they are indeed sort of guerrilla men, but we do plough through a good number of them. A lot of them get shot. Yeah. And they spray out like solid black blood. Yeah, and like it's black, gross. thick guerrilla blood. And yeah, we're, we're, and when we say they bleed, we mean like they, they're sh they shoot solid, concentrated like Evil Dead stream. spray. Yeah, Evil Dead style, like Shaw Brothers martial arts film style blood sprays. Uh, Even Godzilla gets it. Yeah, Godzilla gets, gets like it stabbed or bitten or ripped in the neck. Yeah, probably the most accessible point of comparison is the the blood spurting effects in Kill Bill, but obviously that was that was uh, riffing on you know Shaw Brothers stuff. So no. you can, imagine you know the, the blood effects in Kill Bill, but it's coming out of Godzilla's neck, and it's not a pretty picture. You, you were slightly taken aback by that. Yeah, I, I was just like, I wow. Mean, so yeah, when like Godzilla's spraying blood all over the shop. 
uh, Mechagodzilla then launches his finger missiles into Godzilla, which like, like just go yeah, into him, him right in his chest, and he's on his on his underground like blood pouring out of his mouth and neck, and he's got like he's basically got lots of bullets in him, mm-hmm. like kaiju sized bullets inside him, and he just kind of goes right, nah, electricity power, Had enough, yeah. And yeah, he so he starts to kind of pump himself up. He starts to glow, like the scene you mentioned earlier when he's on the island himself in the in the thunderstorm and the lightning storm. He, he starts to glow blue, and uh, it's a massive like sort of flowing river of sparks emerges from his his, his dorsal plate. He's ready to go. He's ready to go, and uh, I mean he he managed to attract attracts two electricity. Yeah, because pylons. magnetic. Yeah, he he like as the head alien says. Uh, He's transformed himself into a magnetic pole. Two two uh, pylons come towards him and then and attach themselves to him. And he manages to make Godzilla try to fly away. Uh, it's, it's attractive. I do a lot of hand gestures in this, and uh, you should see them. And, <laughs> and Mecha Godzilla is uh, attempting to flee. Attempts to fly away, but is, is is drawn towards the now magnetic Godzilla. And so Godzilla just fixes himself to Mecha Godzilla's body and holds him in place. Mecha Godzilla in a lock. Mecha, and holds him in a lock. King Caesar finally feels like doing something and runs in like it's a classic, you know. One kaiju holds the enemy kaiju while the other good kaiju bashes the enemy kaiju. Yeah, a good solid yeah. teamwork. And uh, so the the uh, black hole aliens suddenly eventually go, oh, let's retreat. And then they try. Mecha Godzilla tries to fly away, but Godzilla holds him down. And eventually, you know, like like you know, the, the, the finale of Man of Steel, where Superman fucking snaps, <laughs> snaps Zod's and, neck. Never. <laughs> and like just he re rips Mecha Godzilla's head yeah, off. Yeah, totally. Um, I like this fight because. It's Godzilla, who is sort of reptilian, nuclear birthed creature yeah. of ancient sort of evolutionary yeah. kind of thing, fighting a robot with an ancient god. With an ancient god, well, yeah, it's a good, exactly. it's it's a good mix of monsters. Um, yeah, I, they're all very different. Like, yeah. Usually, Godzilla would be allied with a monster who has an origin that can be like, vaguely similar to his like Angurus or Rodan mm. but uh, yeah well, he had a very interesting ally in Jet Jaguar yeah. uh, last last film and uh, in between he had a very he, he, he's an ally of Zone Fighter right. in the TV series and they, they have a little sparring match and it's really fun and uh, Godzilla lives in a cave and helps them good lad <laughs> and, uh, this is good lad Godzilla so he teams up with King Caesar but there's in, in, in this, there's there's no sort of sense of camaraderie no, between there's no relationship. King Caesar and Godzilla, whereas, you know, obviously, Jet Jaguar shook hands with him at the end. It's almost... Um, the King Caesar stuff is fine, but because he just doesn't actually do that much, mm. it's almost a shame. It's almost a bit too much, because... Yeah. No, well, maybe, maybe not, but it's such a good personal fight for yeah. Godzilla. It's one of my fa- better... Um, Godzilla fights, I think, and one of my better... He has a strong motivation yeah. to fight, which he doesn't necessarily always have in these yeah. films. It's personal. The pre credit sequence with Anguirus uh-huh. should have been King Caesar. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that could have worked. Like, that, I, yeah, I, and that would have just tied it or, in a bit more. Or like either, either him uh, becoming dormant or him hundreds of years ago. Mm-hmm. Just a sort of prelude. Like, you see, like, hundreds, just to establish yeah, him. Okinawa 100 years ago. Totally. And, well, see, King Caesar is so interesting because, like, even though he's not executed particularly, I found the character impressive. interesting. Yeah, I, I really did. But there's, there's so much potential there. Like, for example, in World War Two, mm-hmm. Okinawa was a particular point of uh, offense by the U.S. It, it was a particular point of attack oh. from the U.S. And I mean, just just imagine, just imagine, right? Fucking like a, a, a one-off special or a movie or whatever. Like the U.S. soldiers during World War Two, near the end of the Pacific War, are like, storming Okinawa, uh, like storming the Azumi royal family's uh, property. You know, harassing the locals, dragging them out of their homes, and then like this fucking giant deity. Appears, yeah, totally. Defends Okinawa Certainly. and drives the U.S. military out. That that cool. would that's there's the potential of King Caesar as a character. Yeah, no, I did actually. King that Caesar sounds cool. anti-American, but, but you know, it's cool. You know, it also sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I I do hear you there. I do actually agree with you. Like, it's not that I think King. I Caesar just imagine is the, the looks on all these U.S. soldiers' faces going, "What the." 
Yeah, what yeah. is this? Yeah. The opportunity to just use like almost like a, a mythic kaiju is actually really cool. Like yeah. a kaiju of prophecy and each like a, yeah. a a godlike creature. The the opportunities similar for, to Martha. The, well like yeah, exactly. The opportunities for expanding the lore of the initial run of Godzilla movies is unending. Oh yeah, totally. It's a uh, I mean, yeah, it's there's there's a lot that could be done there with the characters and even with the human characters and But yeah, I I really like Godzilla's costume. Mecha Godzilla's was particularly really cool as well. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're right there. That needs to go in because I'll be here what I said, like hear what I said like when I said <laughs> I have the cutest little sneeze That's done again, yeah. Um great costumes, great special effects. Like I maybe spoke too soon when I said I don't think this is one of the, you know, I've, I've sort of said that there are a good few Godzilla films that to me are almost like quite generic little human storylines, mm. not too much going on, decent fight scenes, and it's just, I prefer when they're sort of well handled. I don't actually think this is one of those. I think this is actually one of the better ones. It didn't quite have the same personal grab with me. Yeah. Um, Certainly not my favourite of the Jun Fukudas. I really liked Ever Horror of the Deep. Yeah. What was the other one I really liked? Uh, of the Jungle Kuda films. Yeah. What was the other S- island one? Son of Godzilla. Son of Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. Loved Son of Godzilla. Because it, well, because it gave you your son. It gave me my son, Mila. I, I brought Ross home a minion badge mm-hmm. from G Fest. I'm wearing it proudly. <laughs> um, my casting. Well, well casting. <laughs> you, yeah, you're, if you were a monster, you'd be minion. Well, but would. so. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla also represents uh, the end of a lot of uh, what came to define the uh, Showa Godzilla series, right, as, yeah. as the first run of films is known. Uh, so we, we do have goodbyes to see. Yeah. Um, it's it's goodbye Jun Fukuda. He's he's done with the series see now. Boy. Uh, Masaru Sato's done. And that's musician. Musician, right, yeah. Right, okay. And uh, Shinichi Sekizawa, who wrote so many of the 60s and 70s films, he's is out. done as well. Right. So those are, I mean... Fukuda and Sekizawa especially, those are... Why were they out? Why did they leave? Do we know? Or... Um, Just done? Yeah. Um, the next film after this is the last of this run. Right, okay, so yeah. this is the Showa... Yeah, this is the penultimate film of the Showa series. What was the Showa series again? What, what defines that? The Showa What's series Shoah? is... Well, Showa refers to uh, the reign of an emperor. Right. A certain period. Yeah, so it was the Showa period. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so technically, in terms of the Godzilla canon, the Showa series are the films from 1954 to 1975. Right. The first one of films, 21 years. After that, 1984 to 1995, we have the Heisei series, mm-hmm. because we're in a new era, a new generation. Uh, after that, from 1999 to 2004, we have the Millennium series. Mm. With 2016 now. Mm-hmm. We have what is starting to be called the Shin series Resurgence. with a uh, Shin Gujira. Actually, Toho have taken back Godzilla Resurgence as his English title, are insisting on calling it Shin right, Godzilla. Right, okay. Yeah. Shin Godzilla. Shin sure. being a sort of indirect way of basically saying Japanese Godzilla. Like this is yeah. Japanese Godzilla. Don't pretend otherwise. Whereas Shin in Japanese has like a lot of different meanings, like a uh, new reformed a uh, true right okay uh, so it means, cool. it means a lot of things it's almost yeah. like a mission statement yeah <laughs> perfect like, nailed it yeah we're it's, back. it's entirely a mission statement yeah and uh, what, sounding what, what, hearing how radical this film is i'm not i'm not seeing it myself but um it sounds like it's going to live up to this mission statement yeah and uh, also out, so outside of those series the show the hasey and the millennium and the shin we have a uh, we have a uh, first Hollywood film, mm-hmm. eighteen ninety eight, and we have a uh, legendary series, yeah, which is is going to be thing. Godzilla Kong Skull Island, Godzilla Two, Godzilla versus Kong, if all goes to plan. If all goes to plan, which I'm sure it will, and I hope it does. It looks decent because Kong. the Skull Island trailer looks fucking good. Yeah, it does. It looks I saw that as well. Really good. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, sorry, bringing it back to Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. So, so yeah, this is the penultimate film of. The Showa series. Right. So we're saying goodbye to Fukuda, Sato, and Shinichi Sekizawa. And Fukuda and Shinichi Sekizawa in particular, the pretty significant departures, like pretty big players yeah, totally. in the formation of this series. Shinichi Sekizawa basically wrote kaiju films 
as we know them today. Like he 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 made them what they are today. Yeah. And the potential in his screenplays, especially his early screenplays, they weren't a lot of the early kaiju films. Godzilla, uh, Rodan, Viren were very sort of a had overtones of horror. Ah. Oh. Uh, and were very grim and dark. And whereas Sekizawa brought in this change, <laughs> brought in this change, and you, you could. You can have a kaiju film that's an espionage yeah, movie. Yeah, different genres. You can have a kaiju film that's an island adventure. You can have comedy. You can have thrills and romance and all these things. Yeah. All through his screenplays. And as I said earlier, Jun Fukuda uh, helped cement the idea of the, the hero Godzilla. You know, the, mm. the Godzilla who will rise up and save the day like a superhero. You know, he rides in on the white horse and a white hat and saves the day. Yeah, exactly. The big adventure. Two very defining ideas ideas in this early run of Godzilla movies and it's a shame that Sekizawa does get the recognition and uh, applaud that he deserves within this circle obviously he doesn't fucking get it in anywhere else yeah exactly um, but you're holding a but candle yeah, uh, but Jun Fukuda I think is a severely underrated figure in terms of his contribution to the Godzilla series and the kaiju genre. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, I certainly love him. He's direct, he directed other special effects movies outside of this. He directed a film called The Secret of the Telegian mm-hmm. about uh, 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 a serial killer who could teleport. Oh, wow. I, kind of, I, I actually would like to see yeah. Jim Fugura's other films. Well, I might did, well, try and endeavour to I, do that. I think I mentioned a few episodes ago, maybe on the Ebra Horror, the Deep episode, he directed two sort of... A, Spy comedies, yeah, which are kind of riffs on James Bond. First one's called 100 Shot, 100 Killed. The second one is called uh, Bootied Babe, Busted Boss. Excellent. And they both star Kira Takarada as Andrew Hoshino, Ooh. a French-Japanese uh, sort of... Is he a con man? Is he an Interpol agent? Eh, we don't know. And see, when you watch that, it is... I mean, I, I love his Godzilla films, but holy shit, you watch those films, this is, this is Jun Fukuda in his fucking element. Like, right. big, huge caperish action and it's f- they're fucking great cool I want to watch those and, yeah, it's just, to like, say goodbye to Jun Fukuda we'll properly see, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try and get <laughs> to watch those um, so uh, I, th- I think we're, we're, we're good kind of wrapping this yeah, up yeah so should we do our little extra things first or should we say well what does the general public think of this well I say, uh, well, I yeah, say the, gen- I, the specific public well, I, <laughs> the, 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 the fandom what does the fandom Godzilla fandom grab your oxygen destroyers uh, the Godzilla never yeah. say that again <laughs> I, I, I won't I'm sorry Good. Um, so this film is sort of regarded as something of a return to form ah uh, certainly, you know, certainly. Within this circle, obviously, you know, outside of our, our bubble, you know, oh, this is a Godzilla film, stupid dubbing, yeah, yeah, I know that fucking cliche bullshit. Uh, this film is very much seen as uh, a return to form. It's, 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 it is well received in the fandom, generally. Yeah. And it, this film's biggest contribution to Godzilla lore is Mecha Godzilla, who. Uh, is regarded by Toho as one of their big four. Their big four monsters that have international, uh, they're internationally recognised and have brand potential. Godzilla, cool. Rodan, King Ghidorah, Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, I mean, I'll say he was a strong character. Yeah. He really was. And he is. He he. You you see him again. I'll see him again. In, 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 in different. Well, I'd be in, sick of him. Different incarnations, different continuities. Interesting. So, uh, Very good. yeah, so you've, you've not seen the last of Mega Godzilla. This no. film is well received. Yeah, it? generally. I can totally see that. Um, okay, so elsewhere, uh, we, we haven't done user uh, listener submissions for the past few episodes, but uh, we, 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 we got one uh, from uh, Tim Coogley, who runs the blog Kaiju Fiction on Tumblr, a very excellent uh, blog uh, in which Tim uh, creates his own. Uh, sort of, he describes it as a uh, micro fan fiction. He sort of gives story treatments and uh, uses and creates Photoshop illustrations and uh, and montages to illustrate these ideas. And it's a very cool blog. And uh, I mean, he, he had an idea for uh, a story in which Godzilla is sent to the depths of hell, and a year later, IDW Comics Company published that story, like without his involvement. Right. Okay. So something very similar. Whatever. So anyway, Tim, ha- Tim uh, Kaiju Fiction on Tumblr shares this anecdote with us. 
My experience watching Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla as a child forever cemented the kaiju's place in my imagination. It was the spring of 1998, a month before the release of Emmerich and Devlin's Godzilla, and my second grade mind had just been blown open by the bloody spectacle of Godzilla vs. Gigan. Mm-hmm. It was a great time to discover Godzilla as AMC. Is that, um, what's AMC? The theatre. The oh, American okay. theatre chain. As AMC and the Sci-Fi Channel would regularly host marathons oh, and the, the, on the network. cable TV. You mean Mad Men, AMC of Mad Men, The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul fame, Stephen. Nailed Four it. shows you will probably never watch. <laughs> um, Tim continues. Anyway, carry on. Gigan and Mechagodzilla were the first movies I ever rented from the local blockbuster video on VHS, mind you. And since I had a Gigan toy, that was my first go-to. Granted, I had seen King Kong vs. Godzilla once, clips of destroying monsters in the local radio shack, and Godzilla ripping Hedra to shreds in the laundromat, but this was my second full Godzilla experience. I understood Godzilla to be a raw, bloody, violent, and quote-unquote adult to the mind of a nine-year-old. I put Mechagodzilla on the next night while my parents were out, leaving my older brother and I home alone for a few hours. Perfect time to turn up the volume. Immediately the movie starts with a cataclysmic introduction to Godzilla, it was a dark and stormy night, and quote unquote, Godzilla explodes out of the freaking volcano. I was excited to see Angerus back, with less dialogue, then horrified by his untimely demise. IP. Then, as the mystery of the space titanium unfolds and Godzilla unleashes righteous mayhem on the city, my brother flings open the front door and shouts, Tim, you have to come and look at this. <laughs> Pausing the movie, I, t- I rush around the corner to see, looking off our hilltop down the Columbia River Gorge, a column of fire reaching into the night sky. Wow. The orange glow spread across the across the low, overcast ceiling, illuminating the surrounding mountains in a nightmarish gloom. Nuclear horrors fresh in my impressionable young mind. Naturally, my first thought was that it was an atomic bomb, followed quickly by fear of contaminated air and radiation. My brother was already dialing mom and ordering me to switch over to the news. For all we knew, the world was ending. <laughs> all the while, all I could see in my mind's eye was the silhouette of the titanic and furious king of the monsters looming over the horizon, raised in the glow of the nuclear holocaust left in his wake. That night, Godzilla became real to me. Turns out, there was a natural gas line explosion somewhere up the river. What looked like a column of fire was the glow of the explosion of the low cloud cover. We breathed a sigh of relief once we learned the air was not, in fact, filled with poisonous gas. Good, as, as, as you would, as, as you would, yeah. Glad to hear it. <laughs> I could finally turn the movie back on with the fiery glow still a light in the sky and volume loud enough to practically hear the rumble outside. Suddenly, a second Godzilla appeared and I was sucked right back into the movie. Imagine my shock to discover who I thought was Godzilla had, in fact, been a cyborg the whole time. I couldn't get back, wait to get back to Blockbuster and pick up the next one I was looking at, the newer and even more apocalyptic Godzilla 1985, a film that we'll get to fairly soon, Ross. So what's next? That's, a great story. Right? That, that's, that's, that's a great, that's a horrible little that, story. Yeah, there. that's that, 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 that's fun to hear. Yeah, but it must have been fucking terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us, Tim. Uh, and do check out kaijufiction.tumblr.com. Well, I actually, I live right by a. Uh gas production thing as well so I don't know exactly what that's like the BP the BP yeah. um, anyway so, Ross what's next up next for you the final the film f- the final the film Showa Generation 1975 sees the return of Ishiro Honda to the bang director's in. chair bang in in his final outing oh. in a Godzilla film we have the return of Akira Ifukube doing the score Hola. The final three-way collaboration between Honda, Ifukube, and producer Tanaka. Dream team. We have Terror of Mechagodzilla. He's back, baby. That's cool. He is That's back. That's good. I look forward to that. <laughs> so <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I built up Terror of Mechagodzilla too enthusiastically, <laughs> and I've thrown my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I've thrown my voice a little bit. <laughs> well, there's an anecdote. There um, you go. At G Fest, I uh, I met uh, Danielle, who on uh, Tumblr is uh, Daikaiju Danielle, and she's a fine artist. Mm-hmm. Um, after I met Akira Takarada and shook his hand and got a photo and got him to sign my criterion of the original Godzilla, um, I, I I I I saw Danielle and I just kind of had a little you know a little fan freak out like ah. 
ah, oh my god, look at this! Oh, no, no. And like then my 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 jaw locked. Oh no, <laughs> my jaw locked. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna both freaking out together. I went, oh my god, I'm so excited that my our jaw is locked. And she said, oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I was like, no, seriously, my fucking jaw is locked. And she said, oh my god, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awful. That's so funny. So though. yeah, we have Terror of Mechagodzilla up next, the final film in the original run of Godzilla films. Look forward to so, it. So um, we're nearly halfway there. We are. Um, now, I think before we go, we're very close. So, Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla, yeah. Has it, been it, released. It's out in Japan, came out on the 29th. How will you see it? Fuck knows. <laughs> Who knows? Are you, are you, you're kind of hoping, are you worried about this? Are you worried that like people are going to see it before you? Is that your biggest fear? Well, people, people have. People, I mean, people have gone yeah. to Japan before the. Well, there you I mean, go. As soon as it hits America, it'll get leaked. That's I, true. I, I'm confident. Um, I'll watch a leak because I'm going to watch it at the first opportunity I have. Yeah, that's I mean? fair. I mean, I, I, some UK distributor does have it, apparently. Mm-hmm. To what capacity? Who knows what that means? It could mean literally anything. They're going to stick it on DVD only in a year's time. Yeah, like you just don't know. Yeah. Like, I, your ideal situation would be a nice, like a cinema release somewhere in yeah, Britain. Yeah, like maybe festival or... Yeah. Like, 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 Scotland loves sc- anime. We do. The cursed film festival. Oh dear. Um, yeah, like a wee show in Glasgow would be nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like G- Yeah, that big long the, the red carpet or the film house. Yeah. Oh, that red carpet. Mm-hmm. So, 118 metre red carpet. Oh, that filled that entire city That filled the entire town. Um, anything else to wrap up on? Uh, I don't think so. Um, right, Stephen showed me a picture that was drawn uh, based on my comment. I can't remember what film it was or what yeah, monsters it was, it was. Godzilla vs. Megalon. You described Gigan and Megalon as space pricks. They are space pricks. And our dear friend Alex yeah. produced really great space pricks fan art for the spin-off so Space Bricks. We'll, <laughs> so we'll get that up on the blog for you all to look yeah, at. It's, it's very really cool. great. It's really funny. It made me laugh a so, lot. Thank I was, you. I was drunk when you showed me it. You were, so yeah. I, like, I, I, I was, we were, we were both drunk. You, you I, were drunk when you showed me I it was, as well. I, think, I took a video of me giving it to you while we were both drunk. Well, hopefully that can go on Should we just well. put that up? Yeah, yeah <laughs> let's put that up. Yeah. Just watch that. Yeah, cool. Right, we look forward to that. We are on Twitter, Instagram. Tumblr is... Tumblr... Tumblr.com is the blog from which this podcast is spun off. We are at home at soundcloud.com forward slash Kaidosaurus. We're also on iTunes at Kaidosaurus Podcast. We have separate Twitters, etc, etc. There'll be links to all our social media in the show notes as usual. Well, that was certainly a lot of effort. That was, <laughs> it's 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 we've it's done so many now that it's just it's such a routine. Now. You should just copy what you said the last time and just paste it over this <laughs> one. Um, but anyway, another great one. Yep, I did like this film. Thank you for listening, guys. Thoroughly enjoyed myself as always. We will see you soon. We'll see you soon. Hopefully for... a little bit quicker than uh, yeah. we have. We took a wee bit of a delay because we've been busy, busy boys. Ah, they had the G Fest episode to tide them over. Exactly, that's it. You... With Raf and Alex. Exactly. So we'll see you soon for Mecha Gojira no Gyakushu. Mm-hmm. Now, one last request, Stephen. Please find the picture that was taken of us uh, <laughs> at this party we were at where you pulled me out of a, a window. And on, that, and on that note, thank you everyone. Take care.